Imagine two Python projects built by equally skilled developers. Both solve the same problem. One feels smooth, short code, fast runs, easy changes. The other feels heavy, longer code, slower execution, tricky bugs. The quiet difference is the choice of data structures. Good containers make work easy. Poor choices slow everything down. In this session, the goal is to make the main Python data structures feel obvious to use in daily work, with simple examples, gentle explanations, and a focus on what to pick and why. We will keep it friendly, keep it visual, and keep it practical. There are four everyday containers, list, tuple, set, and dictionary. Think of them as tools that answer three questions. Do we care about order? Will the data change? Do we allow duplicates? If order matters and the data will change, lists are great. If order matters but the data should not change, tuples fit. If only unique items are needed and order does not matter, sets win. If names must map to values, dictionaries are perfect. With just these rules, most choices become simple. Start with lists. A list keeps items in order, allows repeats, and lets you change anything. Picture scanning a folder and collecting file paths as they appear. Each new path is appended to the end. If a thumbnail job finishes, remove its path. If you need the third item, grab it by index. If you want a part of the list, slice it. This feels natural because lists are built for it. There is one common gotcha. Removing from the front is slow for long lists because everything has to shift left. If the plan is to add and remove at both ends often, switch to a deque, which handles both ends quickly. For most ordered collections that grow at the end and change sometimes, lists keep code clear and fast. Tuples look similar but behave differently. A tuple keeps order and allows repeats, but cannot be changed after creation. That one rule is powerful. It makes tuples small, fast, and safe to share across functions. If a function returns width and height, a tuple like 1920-1080 communicates that these values belong together and will not change. If there is a color as RGB, a tuple like 255-128-32 works nicely. Because tuples can be used as dictionary keys if their contents are hashable, they are also great for caches. Map, user underscore ID page, to a rendered result, or X, Y, to a computed distance. If the data needs to change later, a new tuple is created, and that explicit step prevents accidental edits. Think of a tuple as a sealed, labeled packet of values, compact, trustworthy, quick to pass around. Sets are the best way to handle uniqueness. A set does not keep order and does not allow duplicates, but it answers, is this here, very quickly. If you have a list of emails with repeats and you want only unique addresses, convert to a set and the duplicates vanish. If a pipeline should not reprocess the same file twice, keep a set of completed file IDs to skip repeats. If two lists of IDs need to be compared, sets make it easy. Intersection for IDs in both lists, difference for IDs only in the first list, union for all IDs seen across both. Sets do not support indexing and do not remember insertion order. So if a sorted or display order is needed, Convert the set back into a list and sort it. Use sets to filter and test quickly, and then switch to lists when presentation matters. Dictionaries map names to values. They feel natural because many problems are exactly that. Connect a key to a value. A dictionary can map a username to a profile, a file path to its metadata, or a product code to its price. Looking up a value by key is fast. Adding or updating a value is straightforward. If a key might be missing, the get method returns a default instead of raising an error, which keeps code calm and readable. Dictionaries also iterate well. Looping over items gives both key and value together, which often matches the shape of the work. 
If dictionaries become deeply nested and hard to read, consider small named structures to improve clarity. But for most tasks, dictionaries are the cleanest way to express relationships in code. With these four understood, a few special structures from the collections module can make programs shorter, faster, and easier to reason about. A deke is a double-ended queue that allows fast appends and pops on both ends. If a list is used as a queue and the program often removes from the front, performance suffers. A deke fixes that. Imagine a processing pipeline that discovers jobs and adds them to the right, while a worker picks the next job from the left. The deke stays fast no matter how long the queue gets. It is also useful for sliding windows, like keeping the last n events to compute a rolling average. Counter is built for counting. Give it a list of items and it tells how many times each item appears. If you have a transcript and want the most common words, counter does it easily. If you have event logs and want the most frequent status codes, counter reveals them right away. It can also show the top n results with most underscore common, which turns raw lists into quick insights without writing loops and conditionals by hand. Default Dict removes the need to set up dictionary keys before using them. It creates a default value for a missing key the first time it is accessed. If you are grouping comments by user, a default dict of list will create an empty list automatically, and then you append the comment. If you are counting events by type, a default dict of int starts counts at zero, so you can just add. This simple change reduces boilerplate and keeps the core logic front and center. Named tuple gives tuples readable names. It keeps tuple speed and small size, but lets you access fields by name. For a point, p.x and p.y read better than p bracket zero and p bracket one. For media metadata, meta.duration and meta.codec are more meaningful than meta bracket zero and meta bracket one. If a full class is not needed, named tuple keeps code light and clear. Ordered dict matters when order is controlled on purpose, so regular dictionaries keep insertion order now, but an ordered dict lets you move items to the end, reorder keys intentionally, and show that order is part of the logic, not just a side effect. It is useful for structures like least recently used caches where recency matters. ChainMap lets you look up keys across several dictionaries in order. Think of configuration. Defaults live in one dictionary, environment settings in another, and user overrides in a third. A chain map searches the top one first, then the next, then the next, and returns the first match. It keeps code short and matches the way people think about layered settings. Let us ground this with small examples that match daily work. Suppose you scan a folder and collect video file paths. A list holds paths in the order found. A dictionary maps each path to metadata, like duration and resolution, so lookups are instant. A set keeps track of paths already processed, so a restart does not repeat work. If tasks arrive steadily while a worker consumes them, switch the list to a deke, so adding on the right and removing from the left stays fast. If you are analyzing comments and want to find common words or repeated issues, use counter on the word list to get counts in one step. If you are grouping comments by author for review, default dict of list lets the code read group by author without setup code. If you want to make sure the same user is not processed twice in a cooldown window, a set of user IDs solves it cleanly. For rate limiting, keep a DK of timestamps per user. Each time a new request arrives, push the timestamp to the right and remove old timestamps from the left that fall outside the time window. Store the user to DK mapping in a dictionary. If a user goes over the limit, add them to a set of blocked users temporarily. The logic stays short and understandable because each structure matches the idea behind it. When caching expensive computations, store results in a dictionary where the key captures the input. If the inputs are an ordered pair, use a tuple. 
If the inputs are a set of flags where order does not matter, use a frozen set. If the inputs have clear parts, use a named tuple to make the key readable. The next time the same input appears, the result returns immediately. For layered configuration, put defaults, environment, and user overrides into separate dictionaries and read through a chain map. It creates a single view, returning the first value found in the top layer, then falling back as needed. There is no need to merge or copy until a final frozen snapshot is required. Over time, these patterns become instinct. Use a list for ordered collections that change and grow. Use a tuple for small groups of values that should stay the same. Use a set when you need uniqueness and fast membership checks. Use a dictionary to map names to values with quick lookups. Use a decay when both ends of a sequence matter. Use counter to count easily. Use default dict to remove setup code. Use name tuple to read values by name without heavy classes. Use order dict when order is part of the logic. Use chain map when values live in layers. A few gentle cautions help avoid slowdowns. Do not check membership in a growing list. Use a set so checks stay fast. Do not use a list as a queue if you keep removing from the front. Use a dequay. Do not write if key not in dict blocks for grouping and counting. Use default dict. Do not rely on index numbers and tuples when names will make the code clearer. Use name tuple. And do not expect a set to remember order. Switch to a list or an ordered structure when order matters. The pictures are easy to remember. A list is a neat line that can grow and change. A tuple is a fixed photo that you can trust. A set is a filter that keeps one of each and answers, do we have this? Fast. A dictionary is a labeled drawer system. A decay is a two-way conveyor belt. A counter is a scoreboard. A default dict is a cabinet that creates the right drawer the first time it is used. A name tuple is a labeled photo. An order dict is a timeline you can rearrange on purpose. A chain map is a stack of transparent sheets where the top mark wins. Great Python code often comes down to this. Choose the right container early, and everything else gets easier. The right structure makes the program faster, the code shorter, and the intent clearer. When lists hold growing sequences, tuples protect fixed groups, sets keep things unique, dictionaries connect names to values, and the special tools from collections do the jobs they were designed for, work feels lighter. With these simple examples and mental images, picking the right structure becomes natural, and each script starts to feel smooth from the first line to the last.